general examination of the respiratory system. With any patient interaction, the hands should be thoroughly washed and dried before coming into contact with that patient's environment to prevent cross-infection. When you first meet the patient, introduce yourself, confirm their name and date of birth and explain what you are going to do. Protect the patient's dignity by drawing the curtains or closing the door before starting any part of the examination. Begin with a general inspection of the patient's condition and surroundings from the end of the bed. Observe the patient's general status, noting, for example, if they look breathless or distressed. Begin a general examination, starting with the hands. Inspect the nails for signs such as nicotine staining and check for finger clubbing by having the patient put the nails of two fingers together as shown. Observe for the normal finding of a gap between the two. Inspect the palms, noting the temperature and quality of the skin and also observing for palmar erythema. Test for CO2 retention tremor by having the patient's arms outstretched and wrists cocked back. Check the radial pulse by placing the fingertips of one hand over the radial artery on the lateral aspect of the wrist. Count for 30 seconds and double to give a pulse rate in beats per minute. At the same time, discreetly take a respiratory rate, observing the patient's chest. Again, you should count for 30 seconds and double. Inspect the face, in particular checking the conjunctiva for pallor seen in anemia. You should also check inside the mouth and under the tongue for signs such as central cyanosis. Ask the patient to relax back into the pillows and turn to look away from you with the bed at 45 degrees. Check for the presence of an elevated JVP by observing the neck just above the clavicle for a bifid pulsation which is non-palpable. This can be confirmed through the hepatojugular reflex by pressing just below the ribs on the patient's right hand side, which will briefly enhance the appearance. Ask the patient to expose their chest fully by removing any clothing. Observe for signs of breathlessness and difficulty when doing this. Inspect the chest closely for accessory muscle use, abnormal movements, deformities and scars. Palpate for tracheal deviation by placing two fingers each side and gently pressing over the trachea. Observe a full inspiratory and expiratory cycle to check for symmetry of chest expansion. Confirm this by placing both hands firmly around the chest and bringing your thumbs together. Equal chest expansion will cause your thumbs to move apart uniformly. Percuss the chest starting with the lung apices Compare each side as you move down the chest. You should cover at least four different locations on the anterior chest, noting any difference between each side. Observe for dullness or hyperresonance. Auscultate in the same areas, again comparing each side of the chest as you move down. Be sure to listen over each area during a full inspiration and expiration. Listen for the presence or absence of air entry at each site, as well as any added sounds such as crepitations, wheeze or a rub. You should also percuss and auscultate over at least three areas on each side of the lateral chest. Ask the patient to change position if they are fit to do so, so that you can examine the posterior chest. Inspect for scars and deformities such as kyphosis, which may not have been seen from the front. Perform a brief but thorough examination of the lymph nodes in the neck. You should feel underneath the chin, in the anterior and posterior parts of the neck, and in the supraclavicular regions. Verify your findings of examination of chest expansion in the same way as before, observing your thumbs for equal movement. Percuss the posterior chest, again starting at the apices. Be sure to compare each side and percuss over at least five different areas down the chest. Auscultate the same five areas, again comparing like with like, and listen for good air entry and added sounds. If abnormalities are suspected from auscultation or percussion, a test for vocal resonance can further assess a finding. Listen over any area which appeared to show absent breath sounds and ask the patient to say 99. Compare this with normal. 
Tactile vocal phrenitus will identify similar findings, as increased sensation of resonance occurs in these same areas where dullness to percussion may have been observed. Ask the patient to return to lying comfortably on the bed. Expose the lower legs and inspect, noting the temperature and colour of the skin. Note any rashes and tenderness in the calves which may suggest DVT. Press firmly on each ankle with your thumb for five seconds and note the presence of any pitting edema. Replace the cover over the patient and ensure that they are comfortable. Explain your findings and thank them for their time. Document the examination in the notes and arrange any further tests that may be necessary. Once you are finished with this patient, ensure that you again wash and dry your hands thoroughly before moving on to the next patient environment.